Hi, the Techno Bear here. Today we are looking at the brand new Picasa XMX, a smaller brother or sister to the Picasa's powerful SSP. The XMX Eurorack module, like the SSP, is a multifunctional module implemented as a virtual modular. Here you can patch multiple internal modules together to suit your needs. Basically, it's a mini SSP that's been shrunk down in form factor and also in price. But before we get into the details, a small disclaimer. This is a pre-production unit, and I'm going to be showing the software that's still in active development. Now, however, we're close, so it's time to give you a quick look and a bit of a demo. Also, whilst I've been in close collaboration with Picasa over this to develop the software, I've not been paid for this video or the software, and so this video is solely based on my own views and opinions. Let's start with the hardware. It's 28 HP. Um, it's based around a pretty powerful quad-core Cortex-A35 processor running at 1.6 gigahertz and has got 256 megabytes of RAM. You can see there's a nice display. We've got like these 10 buttons here. And then we have these encoders, which are also switch functions as well, which is very useful. Then over here for the I.O., we have eight DC coupled inputs. So it can be used for audio and uh, CV. We then have two DC coupled outputs, again, for audio and CV. And then we can see we are new for the XMX, we have a stereo headphone jack, which we also have a, a little pot here for a volume knob, which, which I find really, really nice touch. Then we have a USB host and device. Um, so the host can be used to uh, host USB uh, MIDI devices, plus compliant ones, and also then the device, this can be connected up to a computer and used as a USB audio interface. Very, very handy. Something I love on the SSP. Finally, we've got an SD card here, which holds the software, the plugins, and things like samples, etc. So for sure, the SSP remains the powerhouse because it's got a larger display and more I.O., etc. However, the XMX provides similar functionality, yet it's in a smaller form factor and at a much lower price point. So I find this really nice, particularly in a small case um, where it can tie things together, particularly with this headphone output. OK, so now let's turn to its operation and the software. OK, so with the smaller form factor, the XMX obviously needs a new UI to reflect this. So Picasa are developing an updated version of Synthor, the software used on the SSP. And this is, so this is going to run on the XMX. Uh, those familiar with the SSP will recognize it for sure. Um, I'm showing here a very early build of it, um, but I don't want to concentrate on it too much at the moment because I want to show you some other software. Uh, but generally, the Synthor will have similar functionality to the SSP version. And yes, it will be able to run my plugins because, as we will see later, I've created a compact UI for all of my plugins. So today, we won't be focusing on that. We're going to be focusing on an alternative. And that is one that I know much more about and I'm excited about since I developed it. So this is Trax, my alternative for using the XMAX and this will become available later on the SSP2. So I decided this time around, I not only wanted to create plugins, but I also wanted to create an entire virtual modular. Trax, like Synthor, is a virtual modular, but it's a rather different beast. Why did I want to do this? Well, first I wanted to have software that could be open source, as this is a passion of mine, but also I wanted it to be able to be influenced by the community um, so whilst what we see today is very much my vision of tracks, of course, this is a start. Once I get, start getting feedback, then it can change in format. Also then, from a functional and design viewpoint, I also wanted something slightly different. I wanted something that was designed more around live performance, and that I'm going to show today. Um, so really, this is what I wanted from this module. Okay. So let's start having a look at tracks. So in this quick demo that I've got here, all the voicing and sequencing is done in, for, by the XMX. So there's no extra effects. So it may sound a bit, a bit dry, um, but I wanted to show it all the same. Um, however, it's important to me 
that tracks is part of my modular. So I did want to integrate it a little bit. And so I'm taking in here clock and uh, a reset signal. And that's important for me because I like to keep my modulars synchronized. So we've got synchronization coming in here. And then we've obviously got outputs going uh, to the modular, but then also out onto my recording software. Okay, so the first thing you can see when you start up is obviously the main screen with, uh, where you can obviously change levels and do things like mute tracks. Um, normal side of things. The main important thing here is you can get back to this always quickly by just holding the up button down. Okay, so let's have a little look at how the sound is actually being made. So we'll go to track three by just pressing the track three button. And here we dive in and we can actually see the modules that are actually loaded into track three. So we can see we have eight slots here and we can do that on four different tracks. And we can then foresee that it has the track input and track output. If we actually click onto one of these modules, quickly, oh, sorry, wrong module. It's on module four. Here we can see my Cartesian sequencer. Uh, so each module has a very different uh, user interface that's dedicated. This one's quite small because it's, it's a got a, a dense set of functionality. Um, in this case, it's running an ARP sequence. Um, so that's how we're getting the sequencing going. Here, we can use the encoders to change values. And we can also then switch through the different values by using these up and down buttons. And then, as I showed earlier, if you hold down this button, you come back to the mixer screen. The next thing that's important to me is I wanted to show uh, a way of easily modifying parameters. Because obviously going into a track and then selecting a particular module, switching between the modules is going to be quite cumbersome. So I wanted a quicker way. So, and so the way we've done that is by pressing down on the performance page, we can come to a selected set of parameters. Now these parameters can be from any module, from any track. So in this particular example, we've got uh, one parameter that is being modified on track one. And another one here. And it can be any parameter of the plugin. So for example, even complex parameters like the uh, on the Cartesian sequencer, we have something that's affecting the order that the notes play on, the so-called snake. And so we can radically change things. This can easily be modified by holding down the down button. And then here we can actually see the parameters that we've done. And we simply can go into here, the add button, and then we can select the track, select the module, and select the parameters. Again, holding up will bring us always back to the track, to the mixer. Okay, so similar to the mixer page, if you hold down the down button at any time, you will come to the performance page. Now you can have multiple pages of this performance, so you're not limited to only these four parameters. You can have as many pages of this, again, by just using the page up and down button to go to them. However, I do recognize that, of course, even then paging through many, many pages of performance parameters isn't ideal in a live performance situation. So many of us use uh, MIDI controllers. And so this is no exception. I've made it so that it's very simple here to basically MIDI map controllers as well. So if I go to a track and I go to an individual module, let's say Platts here, the way we actually do MIDI control is we hold down, we press these two buttons together quickly. Bump. Now we're into the MIDI mode. First of all, what we need to do is to select the uh, MIDI device. And we say here, okay, I need to select the Electra one that I've got connected off camera. And then we basically can go back to the parameter page here, and then we can press the learn button. Okay. Now, just as normal on a DAW or something, the way we now actually do the MIDI learn is we simply touch a controller here, 
And then we, we move the controller on my MIDI controller, which, which I'm doing off screen. And you can see that it starts doing. Now we can repeat this process multiple times. And then once we're finished, we can come back to the MIDI screen and unclick learn. Now what you can also see here is the parameters that are learned, so we can obviously delete them. We can also, using uh, Encoder 4, we can change the scaling and offset of this. So if you only want your MIDI controller to actually change the parameter within a small range, very useful for performance, this is how you do that. Um, should be noted here that you can actually have different MIDI controllers for every different plugin. You can also use the same CCs for uh, controlling multiple parameters. You can use different MIDI channels, etc. So very, very flexible. Okay, so I wanted to focus first on the performance side because I think that's the important thing. But obviously what you also need to be able to see is actually how do we patch this thing? Um, how and how easy is it to set up? So let's, let's do that quickly. So the first thing we need to do is actually uh, in it a patch. Well, this is actually done. If we hold down the uh, top button whilst we're on the Mixus page, we come to the settings screen. And this is where we're actually also able to load new presets and save presets. Um, so if we click on save, we can see we get a keyboard to implement things. Um, importantly, you can actually save as a default preset, and that's going to be the one that's actually used when we load up. Uh, but also, let's have a look at the load button, uh, load screen. Uh, looks kind of what you would expect, <laughs> the ability to select a patch and load it. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to initialize this patch. Okay, silence. Okay, now we're going to come back to the mix screen. Now I'm just going to do a very quick patch because uh, we just need to look at the concepts really. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into track one. And the way we actually insert a new module is we just hold, rather than press the button, which we use to access a module, we just hold down this button and we come into the configuration menu for this particular module. Okay, we don't have a module yet, so we now click on the load button and you can see here we've got a whole, whole range of modules that we can actually choose from. Um, we're gonna actually use the modulation module called OMOD. This is one of my favorite plugins. So OMOD is basically uh, an eight oscillator uh, module, uh, but they are, it's um, able to be run at LFO rates. It can be clocked and also the oscillators are run at ratios. So it's actually a very simple way to get um, a synced up clock. Um, I do have a clock module as well, but I, I, I like this because I've then got eight outputs, which I can also use for modulation as we will see. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to tell it that we actually want to uh, take input from the clock source. Now we can see up here that currently this is in mode of doing outputs. So we're going uh, OMOD to the input. That's obviously not very much use. So what we're going to do is switch it over to the input mode and we can now see the inputs available. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, first of all, we use this module to select this encoder to select the module inputs right so that's fine we then want to select the clock input and i will take that indeed from in one and we just click the encoder and we can now see that it's connected and also here we can see that there's actually a scale and offset function which is controlled by uh, encoder four we don't need that at the moment though next thing we want to do is we want to select the reset and we want to take that from one and again we just click it so now we've actually got a clocked input. Okay, well, that's fine, uh, but it'd be actually kind of nice to control something. So we're gonna back out of that, and now we want to come to another slot. Doesn't really matter which slots you use. Uh, there, there are some reasons, but in, for this case, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, just uh, I'm, hold this down. Uh, so again, same process. We're gonna, just gonna load something. Let's load, uh, let's load plats. Okay, uh, so again, we're just going to come down to plats and then we just load. Okay, we're going to pipe the output of plats into our main output. So again, we just select the module here and then we just click on out. Let's do both of them. Okay, 
Platz by default is just a continuous tone. But what we're going to do now is we're going to flip to the inputs and now we can select the OMOV module that we had before. And if we select the trig input, and we'll take it from oscillator one, we can now say, oh, well, that's you selected the level input. Uh, let's, let's undo that. I wanted to take the trig input. Similar effect, really. And so now we've got a connection there. Now we can obviously, though, also select other inputs here. So for example, if I go down to the harmonic output, we can then take that from, say, input B. And we can get now modulation. And we can do as much of this as we want. Um, and then obviously now we can go back to what we've already seen. So if we go back to the track button here, we can now select the O mod and we can page down here. And now we can change the timing of this. Um, obviously, this is actually a uh, being used as a um, trigger, so we could reset this to square. Doesn't really matter, but we can do that. Um, also, if we come down, this is the other. This is this is what we're modulating the harmonics with, and we can get very different effects. If we could put it into a triangle, way. and with O mod in particular, you've got amplitude and phase as well, so you can obviously do the timing. Obviously, the amplitude you don't really need because you could use a scale and offset on the wire as well. So that's really what I just wanted to show. Um, you can see it's got a performance-oriented interface, um, and yet it's quick and simple to patch. So that is the XMX. My understanding is it's going to be uh, available for pre-order now and that you will be able to get it in, I think it's June. Um, not sure on the price. Um, the idea, obviously, is that I will release tracks um, when it's released. Uh, my intention is also tracks will be available as a plugin for the SSP, but it will also potentially be um, the whole uh, standalone as well on the SSP, but I haven't decided on that yet. Um, obviously, as I mentioned at the start, um, Picasso will also be shipping this with uh, a version of Synthor, um, so you will have options uh, available. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, I hope the demo has been interesting and speak to you soon.